hence for transformation because the word of God is to first of all to empower you but also to transform you amen so thank you for joining in listen i love to hear from you so as we go through this teaching uh, sharing experience uh right in the comment section love to hear from you subscribe to our youtube channel uh, like us on uh, facebook and uh, subscribe to our youtube channel at tabernacle baptist church uh, gastonia north carolina love to hear from you amen love to hear from you so on our facebook i said youtube but also YouTube, Facebook, and other social media platforms. Amen. But it's a joy to share the Word of God with you week after week. Amen. Listen, let's begin our time together as we open with a word of prayer. Amen. Jesus said, men ought to always pray and not faint. Will you pray with me? Father, we love you, we bless you, we thank you for this time that we share, anoint our minds, anoint our hearts, anoint our souls as we uh, sit and share this word together. I thank you, God, for a blessed day. Many have worked all day, and many may be still at work. Whatever they're doing, wherever they are, God, I pray a fresh anointing, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Let us prepare our hearts to receive the impartation of your word. Anoint me afresh as a vessel to share this word. Holy Spirit, you are our teacher and our life coach. So we give you, ask you to give us life lessons that will transform our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray and bless you. Amen. Praise God. Let's begin our time together by declaring our faith in the Word of God. We always declare our declaration every time we preach and share the Word. Shout with me. The Bible is the Holy Word of God. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I am a faith believer. My faith comes by my hearing, my hearing by the Word of God. Amen. You got it. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Well, today I want to uh, share an empowerment word tonight. I want to share an empowerment word. We've been sharing and teaching uh, over the past several weeks about persevering under pressure. So as we began this new month, this new day, the Lord said, I want you to revisit First Peter chapter 5. We've been looking, walking through First Peter, and from uh, First Peter, uh, the message uh, continues. Uh, as we study First Peter, we are drawing and gleaning from what I call experiential faith and wisdom, but also Peter gives warning to believers about uh, walking in faith, persevering under pressure. And as I've shared week after week, uh, the context out of which this letter is written, it is written to persecuted Christians who had been scattered throughout what is known as the diaspora or uh, uh, the, the regions of Asia Minor. These people had become spiritual refugees, if you will. They had become exiled. And so Peter writes, if you look at chapter 1, he writes to them or refers to them as pilgrims who had been scattered because of their faith and covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And so at that time, he's writing to them. They've been persecuted in the first century, scattered, uh, and so uh, from their homeland. So he wrote to encourage their faith to help them to stay strong in tough times. Amen? That's a word for somebody right there. Stay strong in tough times time. Amen. He wanted to encourage them to stay steadfast, persevere under pressure in spite of the cu current oppositional challenges from the adversary. Amen. He wanted to remind them and he encourages us to stay uh, focused, stay faithful. Our victory is already settled in the eternal promises of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are pilgrims as well. We, as we really understand it, nobody's here permanently. We're all traveling through. We're all pilgrims, if you will, but we know that we're en route to a greater promised land. And, and so the consistent message uh, that, that to all of us is to make sure, catch this, that we are divinely positioned in God and continue to live 
in the victory that has already settled for us through the resurrected Christ. Amen? I want to say this now and I'll say it again, but we have to understand and want to write this down. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. Amen? Write that down. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory victory. We fight from a position of victory that is settled in, in Christ's death, his burial, and his resurrection. Amen? And so, we serve a risen Savior. And so, as we understand Peter's perspective, his, he's writing from a Christological or Christian uh, point of view, from, from a, a victorious point of view. And, and therefore, as Christian believers in, in, in 2022, even in our time, we have to understand that we are, 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 are fighting a battle from victory through the resurrection of Christ. Amen? So, as they, as they look at this letter, I want you to look. We, we walk through uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 through 7. Uh, and uh, on last time, he, as he wrote and spoke to the elders and talking about submitting to one another. But if you notice uh, in verse number 8, and, and our first uh, teaching point of reference tonight, our first teaching point, he says in this eighth verse, I want you to write this down, be sober and vigilant. Amen? If we are going to have consistent victory over the adversary, and that's what I want to talk about, consistent victory over of the adversary, and, and when you just hashtag somebody and tell them, we got this, amen? I didn't give my title tonight, what I'm teaching, but I want to label this, I want to label this teaching of uh, this empowering word tonight, amen? Consistent victory over the adversary, and, and you, you know, I always like a hashtag. If you like to hashtag yourself, amen, just shout, we got this. Somebody write this right in the comment section, we got this, amen? You know why we got this? Because of the victory of Calvary, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because our victory is already settled. He is with us. He is fighting for us. And therefore, we can declare, we got this. Amen. Can somebody just shout it right quick? We got this. Amen. We got this. Praise God. We, we, you know, our victory is already settled. And sometimes, if you notice, um, uh, like in basketball games or football games, um, you know, you got the first quarter, you got the second quarter, the first half, and, and I've seen teams that they start out the game, it looked at halftime, it looked like we're losing, it looked like your team is down 20 points, 25 points in a deficit, and, and, and some teams have gone in the locker room as if, oh yeah, it's over over, it's over, but we, we, you know, but, but then they come out of the second half and the opposing team uh, seem like they get more steam, more energy, more something. They go back and, 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 and regroup uh, as a team with their vitality and, 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 and come back and come back from a deficit and win the game. But we have to know that as it relates to our walk with Christ, we don't have to guess what the outcome of the game will be. We already know. Somebody shout, we already know. Amen. We can look in the back of the book. We can look to the back of the book. We can peep to the end and know that in the end, we already win. Amen? But we don't have to wait till we get to the end to declare our victory. We got to shout it now. Somebody shout, we got this. Amen. You may look like you're behind. You may look like you're in a deficit. You may look like you're drowning. They look like the enemy is winning. You may be going through a dark place in your life, dealing with health, physical health, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health. The devil is messing with you on every hand. You may feel like you've been, you've been strategically picked out to be picked on, but I'm here to tell you today, as a child of God, you got to talk to yourself, preach the hell out of, or preach show to yourself, I got a little ears, you got to preach to yourself and declare that no matter where I am, what I'm going through, amen, we got this. Somebody shout, we got this. Amen. We got this. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. We got this. Amen. So that, that's, where, that's, the, that's the position that I want us to talk, I want to talk to you about tonight as we draw from Peter's uh, experiential wisdom, amen, and, and knowledge of walking with God. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8, we got a, he says, be sober. Let's look at this again. Let's look at this. He says in verse 8, be what? Sober 
and vigilant. Now, what does sober mean? Sober means to be self-controlled. And we know as children of God that we are not just self-controlled, but we are spirit-controlled. Say spirit-controlled. We are controlled by the Spirit who dwells within us, and that's what Galatians 5.22 talks about being filled with the Spirit or having the fruits of the Spirit is to be Spirit-controlled, Spirit-led. We're not controlled by our flesh. We have surrendered our flesh to the will of God, the ways of God, and the power of God, and therefore in order to live in victory of God, of Jesus Christ, we've got to submit to His Spirit who dwells in us, who dwells with us, and know that we can't do it in ourselves, amen, because we're not fighting a physical battle, amen. We're not dealing with flesh and blood, amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians uh, 10, uh, 10 uh, that we, you know, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but what? They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen? We, amen. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. It's not a physical battle. Amen? Uh, 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 amen. Ephesians uh, 6 and, uh, and 10 talks about finally be strong in the Lord, put on the whole armor of God. Amen. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. Amen. So, we, you know, we understand what we're wrestling with, what we're dealing with. Amen? So, we, we, we know that the weapons of our warfare, as he says in 2 Corinthians 10, are, 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 not my, are not not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So in order to be sober and vigilant, we got to be not only self-controlled, but we got to be what? Spirit control. Right, write yourself a note, spirit control. Amen? Because when you start walking in flesh, flesh is, is up and down. Amen? The Bible talks about the heart, you know, it's desperately wicked. It, it's fickle. It's up and down. Because sometimes you feel like you're ready to run through a, a, a troop and jump over a wall. You're ready to beat the devil, his cousin, mama, them, everybody. All right? But then there are times you just feel like you're drained. You're just depleted. You feel like you are in the dump. Has anybody been there? Sometimes I mean, you can, you can have a high Sunday and a low Monday if, if you allow yourself to get into that place. And so the devil will try to make you feel like, you know, oh, you were up here, oh, praise the Lord on Sunday. And then Monday you find yourself, why am I feeling like I'm in the dumps? Amen? But those are the seasons that the enemy is trying to, trying to, trying to attack. Amen? And that's when you have to really begin to preach to yourself, talk to yourself, encourage yourself. Amen? Feed. And, 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 and read the Word of God, feed your spirit man, and, and remind yourself who you are, amen, that I'm not led by my flesh, but I'm led and controlled by my spirit or by the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, amen? And he's our, he's our helper. He's our paraclete. He's called alongside of us. He's the one that dwells in us and with us, amen? So, so here it is. Peter says uh, to us, be what? Be sober, but then he says, be vigilant. Now, that vigilance is, is not, it, it's a military term, which means to be watchful. Be on guard, amen? Be discerning, all right? Be, 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 be aware of your surrounding. Be spiritually alert, amen? We are not to be paranoid with the devil and talk about, and we're going to give him no free publicity. Oh, the devil is busy. Oh, we blame the devil on everything. You know, the devil said, yeah, go ahead and give me that free publicity. I'll take it. But a whole lot of stuff, we can't blame the devil. We do know we got to be discerning and knowing what the devil is doing. But we have to also know that even when the devil is messing, amen, while God is trying to bless us, God will take what the enemy meant for our evil and, 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 and push us for our, make it for our good. Amen? God is always working in our behalf. Say that with me. God is always working in our behalf. God is always working. Because the Bible says, and we know, come on, Bible readers, Romans 8, 28, and we know that what all things work together for the good of them that love him 
and who are called according to his purpose. So God will, it, it doesn't matter what it looks like. You can't, you can't go by what it looks like, as your situation, your circumstances, your season, because we understand that seasons come and go. All right? And we also understand that no matter what season or situation we're in, when we are surrendered to the hand of God, the power of God, and we are, we, we are walking with God, then, then we know God's going to call it to work together for our good. Amen? What the enemy may try to, try to drown us uh, or, or destroy us, God will use it to develop us. Amen? Uh, that test that you're going through, that trial. Amen? God, you you got to start talking to yourself. This is just another testimony. Testimony. Amen? Stop saying, oh, I'm, going, I'm being tested. No, I'm, I'm getting a greater testimony. God's going to get glory. There will, what, there's a song. That there will be glory after this. Amen? That, somebody just shout, there will be glory after this. And you got to talk to yourself. You got to encourage yourself. Amen? So, so Peter, Peter here says, and I want to stay, stay true to the text, and as we walk through it, he said, be sober, be vigilant, don't be paranoid. You ain't, oh, you, you scared of the devil? Oh, do, no, no, the devil is not a, he's not a threat to us. Amen? He's not a threat to us, all right? We, we, we are to be vigilant, watchful, amen? And then he says, because, here it is, your adversary, the devil. And that's what his name means, it is adversary, amen? The devil, amen? He's public enemy number one, amen? He's the evil one. He's the adversary. He's Satan. He's Lucifer, He's the prince of the darkness of this world. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's the accuser of the brethren. Amen? He, he's not just some, some boogeyman that, that we were taught when we were growing up. I don't know whether y'all, they taught that in North Carolina. Oh, the boogeyman going to get you, the boogeyman. And, you know, little children, we scared of the boogeyman. And, you know, uh, you know no, no, he's not the boogeyman. And, and I, can I help somebody else? He's not just some uh, uh, mystical figure in a red suit with a, a, pit, a, a, a forked tail with a, with, a, with a pitchfork. All right? He is an invisible enemy that we don't see, we don't know. And let me help us. People are not our enemies. Now, Satan will work through people, uh, amen, who does demonic stuff and act the fool and act evil against us, amen. But we have to know that humans are not our enemies. Satan will use them to become enemy, amen. It's just like, now, Putin is not the devil. He's just acting like the devil, Come on now. People act like the devil, all right? If they lie, they're acting like the devil. If they murder, they're acting like the devil. They are children of the devil. Jesus said he's a mur the, the Satan is a murderer from the beginning, amen? And he's a liar from the beginning. He's the father of lies. So we have to be vigilant. We have to know and discern. That's what that vigilant and watching is to know and discerning. Uh, is this of God? Is, is this Satan? Is this self? You've heard me say that before. Is this the sovereignty of God? Is this Satan? Or is this self? What did I just say? Is this sovereignty of God? Is this Satan? Or is it self? And so when you discern, you understand that sometimes God will allow you some moments in your life to experience some challenges that are to stretch you to push you out of your comfort zone in order to mature you, all right? To stretch you, push you out of your com comfort zone in order to mature you, amen? Satan will use stuff to try to drag you down and choke you, amen? But, but notice he said, he says that we're in 1 Peter 5 and verse number 8, he said, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil. And he says he walks about, notice, like a what? Roaring lion, like a roaring lion, what is he up to? Seeking whom he may, what? Devour. 
Peter, Peter uses the, uh, compares the devil's sneaky and devouring ways to that of a roaring lion on the hunt for a prey. Amen. When lions hunt, they look for the young. They look for the weak. They look for the isolated. They look for the marginated. They look for the unassuming. They look for the unsuspecting, the unwatchful, and the unguarded animals. Amen. We are always under satanic surveillance. Amen. Tell your neighbor, we're always under satanic surveillance. He's watching you when you're not watching yourself. Amen. He's watching our moves. He's watching our actions. He's watching attitudes, our prayer lives, our worship, how much time we spend with God. He's watching our conversation, what we're listening to and what we're feeding our spirit. Amen. If you're not reading and feeding your soul and meditating on God and, and growing in grace and, and renewing your mind and detoxing your spirit, Satan will watch for the right time when he knows you are vulnerable, and that's when he'll pounce on you. Amen, somebody. Y'all ever, one of the things, I, I enjoyed doing, watching, and of course it was not only with, my, with, with our children when they were smaller, but I've always, you know, just, just you know, been amazed at uh, the African safari, you know, the lion, the king of the jungle, amen, how, how, how a, a, a lion can go out and, you know, roar and how they make their moves and how they attack, and, you know, they attack an animal twice their size, you know, but they'll go in, they'll try, they'll try an elephant, you know, I'm saying, you know what, they'll, you know, they'll, They'll attack an elephant or other large animals, but they got a tactic that they use, amen? And so, so Peter uses uh, the, the, the illustration that he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he what? He's an opportunist, waiting on the opportune time, amen? And so they'll, they'll watch for that. So, so we ought to be careful that knowing that that's what Satan does, amen? The Bible says in Genesis that, that Satan is like a serpent, Amen. He, Genesis 3 said that, that the serpent was, was the more cunning. He was more crafty than any other creature that God had made. And, and, and one thing, I don't like snakes. I don't like spiders. I don't like scorpions. I don't like snails. I, I just don't. I don't like stuff that slither. I don't. Some, you, you may have them as a pet. You know, God bless you and your pet snake. But I don't, want no, I don't want no snake. I don't want no scorpion. I don't want, I don't want nothing that slither. And, you know, and I, I was watching some last night. People talking about uh, sofas. They found some unusual things in their sofas, uh, Inside Edition or, 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 or one of the programs. And, and people found snakes in their sofas. I'm like, now that's just nasty. That ain't just nasty, that's nasty. But anyway, I don't like no snake. But anyway, a snake, you think about a snake, slither. They, they always slide, you know, slimy, you know. People say, well, yeah, all the snakes aren't, aren't, aren't harmless, you know. But I'll, as for me, listen, snake is a snake is a snake, period. Brown snake, black snake, you know, snake is a snake, <laughs> okay? But, but uh, another, another thing that, that Satan is like, I thought about, you know, it, it, uh, alligators, amen? Alligators, you ever watch alligators, how, how smooth they are, how sly they are? You know, they go underwater and you just see their eyes and sometimes you don't see that, they go underwater and, and you know, they just ease up, ease up. You know, the zebras and the gazelles or whatever, you know, other animals come to the waters, to the pool to get some water and that alligator ease up, ease up underwater and before long, he'll, he'll find that isolated one and jump up and 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 and, and a crocodile or alligator, they snap their uh, their their claws or teeth around their neck and and pull them in the water, and they have a uh, their own innate nature. They'll they'll take they have a what's called a turning. They'll turn turn that animal. Their purpose is to take them out and drown them, kill them, and then they proceed to to eat them. And that's what the devil does. Amen. You don't always see his tactics working against you, but you got to know that you got to keep yourself prayed up. You got to be watchful. You got to be vigilant because we're dealing with somebody that ain't going to play fair. He's not going to play by the rules. Amen. He's a liar. So any way he can deceive you, and so many people are deceived. And guess what? Satan don't always use uh, the, 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 the familiar tactics or that we may look for. He'll, he'll come a different way. And deceive, amen? amen? He'll deceive you. If you're not careful, you got to keep yourself prayed up. Look at somebody, or text somebody and tell them, keep yourself prayed up. 
All right, right in the comment section, keep yourself prayed up, filled up, amen, looking up. Praise God. And, and so, so, so here Peter says that he's like a, he's like a, a, a roaring light looking who he may devour. He don't care who you are. He tried Jesus. Amen. When Jesus had fasted 40 days and, and, and uh, 40 nights in the wilderness right before his ministry, right after his baptism, right, right after the Holy Spirit lit upon him and confirmed him in Luke chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4. Amen. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And, and, and guess who showed up? The tempter, Satan, and said, man, listen, you know, hey, you hungry? Uh, you, 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 can, you can hook up your own uh, sandwich shop. What you like? Cold cuts? You like? What you like? What you like? You know, you, tried to make him turn. He said, now, if you, you who you are, if, if you are the son of God, uh, take a shortcut. Why don't you turn, turn these stones into bread? You know, what kind of bread you like? Wheat, whole wheat? You know, you like wonder bread? You like... You like cornbread. <laughs> but anyway, but, but that, that's the trick of the enemy. He, he tries to appeal to what you like. And, and, but Jesus refused the, 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 the shortcut by saying, man does not live by <clears throat> bread alone, but by every word that what proceeds out of the mouth of God. So, so Satan would try to, mark, try, to, try to attack your situation by making it look worse than what it is. But we ought to understand, we don't live by <coughs> bread alone, but we live by what? Every word. What, that means if God says you're blessed, you're blessed. You know, you, you, can't, you can't go by the word of your situation because your situation may say you're broke right now. You're challenged. You're sick. You're having pain. You're having problems. But the Word of God says you're healed, you're blessed, you're favored of God. Amen? So we live by what? Every word. Somebody shout every word that proceeds and continually proceeds out of what? The mouth of God. Speak, Lord. And so that's why we ought to be, when we're watching, when, we're, when we are vigilant, we're, not, we're watching the tricks of the enemy. But our focus is really watching God. Somebody shout, I'm watching God. I'm listening for God, and we ought to ask God, speak to me, Lord. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice so that I can hear you as my shepherd and, and follow you. I want to hear your, I want to hear your distinctive voice. I, I want to know it's you because I don't want to make a move in any decision that I got to make any, you know, when I start my day, God, I want to, I want to know that it's you guiding me, you directing, you ordering my step because I know I'm going to live not by uh, my situation, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. Amen? All right? So, th the second thing I want to share with you, I want to deviate from 1 Peter just for a moment to make this second point, and then I'm coming back. All right? Second point I want to share with you is that, uh, um, first of all, I said you got to be sober and vigilant, but the second thing I want to share with you is you got to remember that faith will be tested, but victory is settled in Jesus Christ. Amen? Your faith, and I should have said your faith, Say that with me, my faith, our faith will be tested, but our victory is settled in Jesus Christ. Amen? Praise God. Go with me, if you will, take a, take a turn uh, to James, the book of James. Amen? James. James is right before, if you got your, uh, uh, a printed Bible, is right before Peter. Amen? James, of course, another disciple, another apostle of Jesus Christ, bond servant of Jesus Christ. Amen? In chapter 1. And, and James is writing to Hebrews who are scattered. Notice he said, to the 12 tribes which are scattered. So he's talking about those Christian Jews who had been scattered abroad who represent the 12 tribes of Israel, all right? So, but notice he takes a different perspective and he says to them, my brethren, he says in James chapter 1 verse 2, count it all joy. When? Not, not if, because you're going to have some when days. When you fall into various or diverse trials or temptation. Here it is, knowing. See, you got to know when, you, when you're doing right by God that you will be tested. All right? Temptation's going to come. Tests will come. Trials will come. Tears will come. Amen. 
He said that when you fall into various trials, but you got to know, I told you earlier, God is working behind the scene. He's working on your behalf. He said, knowing that the testing of your faith has a purpose. Somebody shout, my test has a purpose. Amen. That, there's a purpose for every test you go to. He said, knowing, we know that, that the testing of your faith has a purpose, and that purpose is to produce what? Patience. Amen. Another word for patience is endurance and perseverance. We've been talking about persevering under pressure. You, you can't have perseverance or patience or, or, or endurance unless you've been first tested or tried. Praise God. Look at what he says in verse 4. He said, but you let patience, endurance, and perseverance have its perfect work or perfected work. It's maturing work. God has a purpose. It is to mature you. Amen? It is to make, make and mold you and shape you and develop you into the kind of person God wants you to be. Praise God. Amen. You, 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 in order to mature into what God wants you to be, God will allow you to have some stretching. Amen. Brother Corey, you do uh, bodybuilding and weightlifting and, and, and in order to keep your muscles uh, toned and muscles activated, you, you, you have to put some more weight or you do those stretching. Amen. You have those, those uh, resistant bands and you have those uh, resistant weights. Amen. And it is to keep you stronger. Amen. And we have to understand that sometimes God allow us to have weights or resistance in our life, amen, we, we'll have opposition in order to make us stronger. Praise God. Amen. So notice he said, uh, let patience have its perfect work or maturing work that you may be, here it is, perfect and what? Complete. And then he says, lacking what? Nothing. When you're complete in God, when you're mature in God, you lack nothing because you are mature. Amen. You know how to, you got everything. All right. So the Lord is maturing you. Somebody writing, God is maturing me. When you go through a trial, just know, okay, the devil is trying to destroy you, but God is developing you. Amen. The, the, the devil is trying to make you sad and, and blue and down, but you got to know God is trying to develop you, how to know how to recognize the tricks of the enemy, how to know how to pray your way out, how to praise your way up, how to, amen, how to encourage yourself, how to recognize the trick of the enemy. And you got to just shout, trick. Come on, somebody shout, trick. Trick. <laughs> you got to know how to recognize and discern the tricks of the enemy. And notice verse 5, he said, listen, if anyone of any of you lacks wisdom, th this, is, this is godly wisdom on how to handle, how to, how to ch face the challenges of life, how to make right choices, how to hear God, how to obey God, how to follow God. You don't just follow every voice, but the wisdom of God, godly wisdom will give you insight and understanding on what to do how to do it, and when to do it, all right? The wisdom of God will give you insight and understanding what to do, how to do, and where to do, amen? He said, if you lack wisdom, you don't go to Facebook, you don't, you don't, go, you don't go to friends, you don't just go to everybody, lot of, lot of, you don't read everybody's newspaper, amen? If you lack wisdom, you don't Google it, Come on now. You, you can Google, you get a definition of wisdom. But if you really want wisdom in your life, the Word of God says, if you, any of you, read that, if any of you, what, lacks wisdom, let him, what, ask of God. He's the source. You got to go to the well. You got to go to the source. And then what does God do? Who gives to who? All liberally. He'll give liberally. Listen, that you want it, the more you want, the more I got. You know, you want it, you want to know, you want to know, you want to know. I had a math teacher, algebra teacher in college. He would always talk about the more you know, the more you know. The more you know, the more you know. Amen. He's talking about math. You know, he's talking about math is all about the more you know, the more you know. Like building brick, you know, the more you know, the, you, you know, one layer at a time. And so, if we're going to walk in the victory of God, the more we know, guess what? The more we know. 
Amen? The more we know the Word of God. So he said, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all, what? Liberally and without reproach. And it, what? It will be given to him. How do we ask? Here it is, verse 6. But let him, what? Ask in faith without doubting. For he who doubts, check this out, is like the wave of the sea, up and down, driven, tossed by the wind. All right? And, and he said, for, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is what? Double-minded. He's a double-minded man, and we know a double-minded man is unstable in what? All his ways. And that's what the enemy want to try to get us, to get you to be unstable, all right? Shade, unstable, eh, you know, un just wavering. A whole lot of folk just, you know, just wavering. They're unstable. And he, if he can get you unstable in your faith, he'll get you unstable in your walk, in your worship, in your work, in your witness. Everything you do, he'll find yourself unstable. Are y'all with me? All right, so tell your neighbor, don't be, don't, don't be double-minded. All right, so, all right, so, so, so our victory is what? Settled in Christ. Somebody shout, victory is settled. Faith will be tested, but what? Victory is what? It's settled, amen? Write this down. John chapter 12, verse 31, Jesus talks about, now shall the, shall the prince of this world be cast out, and he's already cast out. Jesus was talking about our victory early, even before he went to Calvary, all right? Uh, and he even said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen? We got victory in Christ. Go to Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1. You're going to take a left turn, pass uh, by, uh, amen, some of the other uh, 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 first and second Thessalonian, Timothy. But go to uh, Colossians chapter 1, and uh, let's look at verse number 3, Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All the writers open their letters by greetings and, and talks about uh, amen. Praise God. In fact, uh, he talks about to the faithful and to the saints and faithful brethren in Colossae, grace be, peace be unto you. And verse number three says, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and our hope uh, and, and in Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, amen, of which uh, you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel which has come to you as it has to all the world and is bringing forth fruit as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew, here it is, the grace of God in truth. As you also learned from Ephesus, Ephesus, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ uh, uh, on your behalf, amen, talks about who also declared to, to us your love in the Spirit. Now look at verse number 9 and following. It talks about the preeminence of Christ. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, we don't, we don't stop to cease to praise for you. Ask that you are filled with the knowledge of His will. Amen? This is what we need to pray for, the knowledge of, of, of His will. Here it is, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in knowledge of God. Notice, strengthening. All right, with all might, according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering, endurance with joy, giving thanks to the Father. Here it is who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us. Somebody shall delivered us from what? The power of darkness and conveyed or transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have what? Redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. Listen, He's already done that. He has done that. So our victory is already settled. Y'all with me? Somebody shout, our victory is already settled. He's already, listen, He has delivered us from the power. If you're saved, you ought to shout, I'm saved and delivered. 
because he delivered us from the power of darkness, from the grips of dark, and then conveyed, which means he transferred us into the kingdom of his son. He brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light, but he brought us out of the darkness of sin and put us in the kingdom. Somebody shout, I'm in the kingdom. The kingdom of his son, of his love, in whom not only do we have, notice what they have, not only have we, have we been transferred, but we've got redemption. Praise God. We, he paid our sin debt. What is, what, how was it paid? Through his blood. And not only that, but we've got the forgiveness of sin. See, the accuser of, your, of the brother, and Satan is always trying to accuse you of stuff you did before you got saved. But we understand because we're saved, amen, we already got victory. And, and not only that, but Jesus is the image of the invisible God. We're worried about the invisible enemy. You ought to be focusing on the invisible God. Amen. The firstborn of all the creation, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones, dominion, principality, or power, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist, and he is the head of the body. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead, that in him, or that in all things he may have, what? The preeminent. Not only are we redeemed, but the next verse talks about being reconciled in Christ. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell uh, and by him to what? Reconcile, to be friends with, to bring us back in the right relationship with God, amen, all things to himself by him, which is Christ, whether things on the earth or things in heaven, having made peace through, here it is, the blood of the cross. So our victory, somebody shout out, victory is settled in Christ, in the cross. Praise God. That's why we sing the cross. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for the blood. Amen. All those songs we sing, the blood, the blood. The, thank, that's why we take communion. The communion table reads this through in what? Remembrance of me. It's a reminder that our victory is always already settled. Charles Usher, Charles Usher a little, read, read across a little book many years ago. Uh, I said many years, about 20 or more years ago, entitled Satan, a Defeated Foe. It, it's by Charles Usher, Satan, a Defeated Foe. A little book, I don't even know when it was published, but, 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 he, but, but Charles Usher writes, and I want, I want to just share this. He said, there can be no permanent victory in the lives of God's children until they see and appropriate the fact that Satan was defeated at Calvary. There can be no permanent victory in the lives of God's children until they see and appropriate the fact that Satan was defeated at Calvary. He said the church of God is in its last battle, and this means a final conflict with Satan. To approach this conflict from any other viewpoint than Calvary is to court disaster. Amen. So what he's saying is we have to approach Life, Satan, our victory, everything we do, we, 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 we approach it from the perspective of Calvary. Does it make sense? So Jesus was victorious at Calvary, right? So if he was victorious and when he got up, he said, all power in heaven and earth is given to me, then therefore all power in heaven and earth, all authority is given to him. So we view life from the perspective of Christ. Our sins, our path, we are hidden behind the cross of Christ. We are hidden by, when God looks at us, he don't look at us in our fallen state. He look at us in our faith-filled state, and that is the blood of Jesus Christ. Are y'all with me? Somebody shout, I'm covered by the blood. Or oh, say it like you mean it. I'm covered by the blood. Somebody shout, thank God for the blood. Amen. So the first, first of all, amen, first of all, and, and look at, write this down. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verse 57, verse 58, write that down. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he talks about the resurrection and the power of the resurrection. He talks about, oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? Amen. Our victory is already settled. In chapter uh, 15, verse 57, he said, but thanks be to God 
which gives us what? The victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he encourages us. He said, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abounding, always worshiping, always working, always witnessing, always uh, willing to share. Amen. Always working, always doing those things, always abounding, always advancing, always, always striving for as much as you know that your labor, what you're doing is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Somebody shout, we got victory. And y'all know Romans chapter 8, verse 31 through 38. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Amen. Life, death, power, principality, thing, present, thing to come, stuff in the past. And then he said, there's nothing that can separate us. Thank God we don't not only have victory, we are more than conquerors. Y'all know the Nike swoosh. Amen. That, that means that we are super conquerors. Amen. We are more than, we don't just conquer, we abundantly conquer. Amen. Praise God. Y'all got that? So the first, first thing I said, we got to be what? Sober and what? Vigilant. Second thing I said, you're going to have trials, but our victory is what? Settled in Christ. Y'all got that? Praise God. I'll, somebody shout, it's settled. Amen. We got this. Somebody shout again, we got this. Amen. Y'all send somebody a hashtag. We got this. <laughs> but the third thing, third thing, I want to take you back to 1 Peter uh, chapter 5 and verse 9. And this is something we've got to do. God has done his part. We got to be watchful and vigilant, but we also got to learn how to resist the devil. Amen. You got to learn some godly wisdom, knowledge, discernment, understanding. But go back to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 9, and we're going to get ready to wrap up. Amen. Praise God. Look at the Word of God. The Word of God says, he says, he talks about being sober, being vigilant, talking about the devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking who he may be vowed. What is our response to the devil? You can't hang out with him. You can't party with him. You can't give him an inch. You give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Give him a toehold, he'll take a foothold. Take a foothold, he'll, he'll develop a stronghold. Amen. Before long, you don't, you don't compromise. Don't compromise your values. Don't compromise your faith. Don't, don't compromise your, your, your anointing. Amen. It ain't, don't compromise your ministry, your blessing, your life, your family, your marriage, nothing. Amen. Your future, your destiny. But how do we handle it? Verse number nine. Everybody together. We in 1 Peter 5 and 9, the Word of God says what? Resist him. How? Steadfast in the faith. That goes back to the faith. Faith comes by what? Hearing, hearing by the Word of God. You got you to be steadfast in the Word. You, you got to be unshakable. Un, un, you got to have unshakable faith. Come on now. You got to be willing to, to, to know that if I'm going to resist him, if he come at me, if it ain't lining up with the Word, then I, I got to resist him. Steadfast in the faith, knowing you're not the only one that's being tempted, all right, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Here it is that we ought to know we're going to be steadfast, but, but, somebody shout, but, may the God. This really, sound like, this really is a benediction. He said, but, 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 may the God of all grace. Remember, remember in 2 Corinthians, Paul talked about God, God told him my grace is sufficient. Amen. So the God of all grace, for grace for every season, every situation, every storm, every setback, everything you go through, the God of all grace, when you go through grief, when you go through challenges, the God of all grace, somebody write, the God of all grace. What will he do? After you have what? Suffered a while. Remember, I told you you're going to have some trials, so there will be some suffering. He's talking to those who have been suffering through trials and challenges. He said, listen, you're going through, but, but, but hang in there. We got this. Somebody shout, we got this. God got us. Because he said, after you have suffered a while, he said, God will what? Perfect. That word, he'll mature. Catch this. Write these down. He's going to what? Perfect you. He's going to establish you. He's going to what? Strengthen you. He's going to what? Settle you. Hallelujah. 
Amen? Can, that, uh, write these down. First of all, he's going to perfect, which means he's going to stretch you. All right? The devil would try to stress you. Catch the difference. Stress you out. But God is stretching you. He's maturing you. And once he mature you, what does he do? He what? He establishes you. But not only does he establish you, write this S down, he settles you. Amen. He strengthens you and what? Settles you. Praise God. And, and when he settles you, that's why you can praise out of your experience of knowledge. And, and people look at you and wonder how you can praise under pressure, how you can praise through pain, how you can praise through problems, how you can praise through persecution, how you can praise when the devil is messing with you on every hand, how you can go through a Job-like situation. That's what happened when Job went through his experience. The devil tried him on every hand, but the hand Job still declared, the Lord gives and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We got to learn how to praise under pressure. So, so, so that, that's how we learn how to intensify our praise. Somebody shout intensify our praise. Look at verse 11, verse 11, verse 11, verse 11. Praise God. Hallelujah. To him. To him. To who? To God. Come on, shout. To God be the glory. And not only the glory, but what? The dominion. For when? Forever. And you say it again, which means the double affirmation, forever and ever. Praise God. Go with me to Matthew chapter 5, or Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 13. In fact, if you're a Christian, been saved for any length of time, you ought to know the Lord's Prayer. Of time, we focus on the, Lord, the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, but you got to know part of the Lord's Prayer is praise. Amen. Our Father, let me see if we know it, our Father, which art in heaven. We say, hallowed be thy name. We honor him. We praise him. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then we ask him, give us this day our daily bread. Amen. And forgive us our debts. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But then we close it. Jesus closes by saying, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. There it is again. Come on now, get those hands up. That's your victory right now. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. That's your praise. For thine is the kingdom. Say it. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever ever and ever amen how long is your praise forever and ever and ever even when this world is over when this life is over we're going to live forever and ever and we're going to praise him forever and ever. Because since we know he's in charge, what is our response? Praise forever and ever and ever. Somebody send, send somebody a note. Praise is what we do. Praise is what I do. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. But notice, notice the word says, even in both, both here and the Lord's prayer, Amen. Let the church say amen. It is so. It's, it's done. If God said it, it's a done deal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, as always, I'm out of time, but I'm not out of word. Amen. I could keep going on and on and on and talking about the Lord, but I'm going to stop here because I want to spend a few moments on talking and, and sharing with prayer and intercession and uh, have, lift up some concerns uh, that we have in prayer. Amen? So again, tonight, those of you came in a little behind uh, the beginning of our di dialogue together, our focus tonight, the message or the, the impact, the empowerment word was consistent victory over the adversary. And, and, and as a subtitle, we call it hashtag 
We got this. Amen. Write yourself a note. We got this. So when you start, when you come under attack, go through trials and uh, you got to say, you know, no, we got this. God got this. We got this. The Lord and me got this. Amen. So you're not alone. Holy Spirit and, and, and you and the Holy Spirit, we got this. You got to be sober and vigilant. You got to remember that trials come, but uh, our victory is settled. But the third thing I said uh, in this teaching, impartation, what did I say? I said, we got to know what? The power of resistance. Amen. I may not have shared that, but that's the point number three. The power of what? Resistance. We got to resist. He said, resist him steadfast in the faith. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let me pause for a moment, and uh, I'm going to take prayer. Uh, let's, let's lift up some prayer concerns and prayer requests uh, here tonight. First of all, I want to I wanna congratulate and celebrate with those children, particularly our college students who are getting ready to graduate this week and next week, this month. We've got some college students getting ready to graduate, of course. Uh, we've got Courtney's daughter, and give a shout-out to Faith. Amen. We give a shout-out to O. Corey Newman, who's graduating. We give a shout-out to um, Deja Duff, who's graduating with her master's. Amen. We give a shout-out to uh, uh, Destiny Ross. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, Destiny Ross, amen, Reverend Ross' daughter, amen. And uh, all of our high school students, we give a shout-out to Javonda uh, Adams. This is Janice's uh, 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 daughter-in-law, the young lady that helped us to start our uh, 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 sign language ministry. She's graduating from Gardner-Webb University, in fact, this coming Saturday. So we give a shout-out. What an amazing, amazing blessing. She did a, 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 a part of a workshop up there earlier this year, but God is doing an amazing thing. So we celebrate those who are graduating, and then all of those high school students who are getting ready to graduate in the next few weeks, we celebrate uh, the students and the parents and the spouses of those who are graduating from college. Amen? So all those high school students. Now, I want to lift up Brother Willie Meekins, he had uh, two brother-in-laws who passed away uh, in a matter in, in the same week. I want to pray for Reverend uh, uh, Reverend Micah Glenn, uh, the pastor of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Belmont. He had two brothers that passed away within a, a couple of weeks' time. Uh, pray for Glenda Burris, who's recovering well. She's re little by little, uh, day by day, she's recovering. We pray for Deacon Ronald Williams, uh, who's recovering. Uh, Deacon Ben Williams and Mitchell Williams. Uh, and uh, all those on our healing and recovery list, Lucia Thomas, Willie Johnson, Mary Pettis, Early Cathcart, Sonia Cathcart, Pam Allison, pray for my mother, sisters, and, and uh, family, uh, my uh, parents, my marriage, Sam and Gwen White, Miss Mason Mills, this is Yvette uh, Little Mother, Edwin Phillips, son of Mother Mary Cheryl, pray for homeless students, we pray for all those students who are finishing school, they're taking tests from elementary to high, uh, high school. We pray for staff because sometimes the staff uh, get burned out as well. Uh, and uh, let's pray for all levels. Let's pray for our children, cancer patients, domestic violence. Let's pray for souls. That's what God has called us to pray for, lost souls. We need to make a hit list every week. Amen. Praying for lost souls that people will, souls will be added to the kingdom and added to the church. We've got some online prayer requests. Sharon Floyd. Uh, Stephanie Bigger, uh, Brenda Wright, we lift you before the Lord tonight. Amen. Praise God. We continue. Yes, ma'am. Carolyn Lee, we pray for Carolyn Lee, uh, sister, the mother of sister, uh, uh, Karen uh, Crete. Amen. Praise God. I'm about to kiss at Karen Lee, but praise God. Amen. We pray for her. Amen. Let's pray for others in the body of Christ. And we give a shout out to all those who got anniversaries this month. Amen. Miss Hinton uh, is married to her wonderful husband this month, uh, 33 years. <laughs> Y'all know I had to sneak that in there, but we praise God. Miss Wanda, Miss Wanda Graham is going to have a birthday. All those who got birthdays this month, we give a shout out to you. Amen. We 
Praise God for you. Amen. Lady Hinton, yeah, amen. You can give a shout out on Sunday. Lift those hands. Let's pray together. Let's believe God. Father, we thank you for this time that we shared. Thank you for your word that have brought inspiration, impartation, and revelation. God, we are blessed by the confirmation of your word. And Father, we don't take it lightly, but we know that we have victories. Our victory is already settled. Help us to be vigilant. Help us to be watchful. Help us to know that even when trials come, victory is already settled. But help us, God, to continue to persevere. Help us to stay focused in your word. Help us to know the power of consistent resistance. We resist the devil whenever he tries to to drag, drag us, distract us, or defeat us. In Jesus' name, I pray, God, for all these names on our list tonight. We give them to you, and we give you our praise. We don't just come to you with our problem. We give you our praise, for you're greater than any problem we have. We love you. We bless you. We thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, next week, the Guest Encounter Missionary Baptist Association is having a crusade. Amen. It's going to be three nights, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, each night. It's been on our announcement. So, listen, we won't have in respect and honor of that crusade that is going to, we won't have in-person uh, Bible empowerment in the next week. Amen. We will not have it. So I want you to go there or tune in and go online and be a part of that, that virtual uh, worship experience on next Wednesday. We will have it in person on at, at noon, but we won't have it at night. Amen. This Saturday at 9 o'clock, the women's ministry. Amen. Fellowship uh, is on the announcement. Listen, from 9 a.m., T to 11 a.m., it will be in the chapel, eh? Pardon me? Follow the balloons. All right. Praise God. Listen, I'm praying for you. Know that we love you. Thank God for you. It's been a blessed evening. Listen, you make it a blessed night. Lord's will, I'll see you. If not Saturday, we'll see you Sunday morning here at 10. Join us. For Mother's Day, it's going to be Mother's Day Sunday. Love to have you here. You don't have to register. Just come be a part. Amen. Good night. It's time for your TBC connection, keeping you in the know for what's ahead. The deadline for the TBC Founders and Legacy Scholarship is quickly approaching. Stop by the information desk after service or download the packet on our website, tbcgastonia.org. All information must be submitted by May 8th. Culture Keepers is a free 12-day book camp for children in grades 3rd through 6th that will run from June 13th to June 29th at the African American Museum of History and Culture at Luray Mill. Registration forms are available at the museum Tuesday and Friday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Registration deadline is May 20th. Started in 1936 by Harlem postman Victor Green, the Negro Motorist Green Book was an annual guide that helped African Americans travel the country safely and with dignity during a time of Jim Crow laws and segregation. The Green Book exhibit will be on display at the African American Museum of History and Culture at Luray Mill on Tuesdays and Fridays from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. from May 6th to June 30th. Groups may call for reservations. All women, girls, and young ladies are invited to join the Women's Ministry on Saturday, May 7th from 9 to 11 a.m. in the Family Life Center for an interactive mother-daughter fellowship as we join in social-emotional learning, faith, and prayer together. Register for this event on our website, tbcgastonia.org. Mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, aunts, sisters, mentors, friends, and mother-like figures are invited to join us as we celebrate moms on Sunday, May 8th. This has been your TBC Connection, keeping you in the know for what's ahead.